Do each and every one of us hold the power to make a real change in this world? As of today, I'm 15 years, 2 months, and 18 days old. I'm Kamakshi Bhavnani, and this is how my journey began. I'm staring at hundreds of flamingos in a mangrove in the most densely populated city in the world. I'm a year old. I'm sleeping, and I wake up from a nap, and I'm sitting in a jeep. As I look at the trees in front of me, I see a leopard sleeping among the branches. I'm four years old. I'm playing with a rescued baby jungle owlet in Runthambore National Park. I'm five years old. I look through the dense forest, and I see a tiger walking through the grass. I'm six years old. I'm nervous as I'm about to be surrounded by bats and centipedes as I walk through the Goman Tong Caves in Borneo. I'm seven years old. I'm sitting on the forest floor, listening to the ceremonious calls as I look through a slit in the trees and I see gibbons swinging in the treetops of Kat Tien National Park. I'm eight years old. I deflate my BCD and sink into the deep blue sea as I become a junior paddy certified diver. I'm 10 years old. I'm losing hope just as we're about to leave the forest and our brakes halt. Four tigers walk across the road. I'm 13 years old. I'm 700 meters above the water and as I look down, there are three blue whales. I found my spirit animal. I'm 14 years old. I'm Kamakshi. I'm 14 years old. I'm As you can see, I've always loved the environment, ever since I was young, and I've always been exposed to the environment in ways that most people aren't. However, I have always been in love with nature, but somewhere I took it for granted. And one day, that changed. Last summer, I was on holiday in Sri Lanka. My mother had planned this trip, and it was a surprise, and for once, she was able to keep it from us. We woke up in the morning at 5 o'clock and drew from Wellingama to Marisa, and we reached, after 45 minutes, we reached an Air Force base. They took our passports, and within a few minutes, we were allowed onto the base. They told us to wait in a trailer, and that's when I realized we were boarding a four-seater plane. Within two minutes, we were in the middle of the ocean. The pilot told us that we were looking for whales, and since we were 700 meters above the surface of the water, we were looking for the spout of the whale. It should look like a reoccurring wave. After a few minutes of scanning our eyes across the horizon, I saw something that matched his description. As we flew over the whales, I realized we weren't just looking at one beautiful blue whale, but three. In that moment, something changed within me. I didn't know what at the time, but something was different. As I looked over the whales, I asked myself, is this always going to be there? No. I could already see the detrimental effects of climate change, as back home, I had only experienced the ocean when going for beach cleanups. An ocean so full of marine life was unknown to me. Little did I know, such marine wonders were sitting in my backyard too. When we returned to Hong Kong, I couldn't get the blue whales out of my mind. I kept replaying that moment on a loop. And then I naturally expressed myself through art. So one day after school, I decided to paint the whale on my wall. As I stood and looked at the half-painted whale, I had recalled all the things I had done over the past few years. Just a few months before we went to Sri Lanka, I shaved my head to raise money for children suffering with cancer. This was one of the most vulnerable experiences in my life. Without hair, I felt exposed. But at the same time, I told myself that th if I wanted to do something, I could set my mind to it and I could do it. So as I looked back at the whale, I realized that the environment was my passion. The vision was clear in my head. So I decided to make it my purpose to protect the natural world. I believe that we have a lot to learn from animals, and in that moment, I realized that I wanted it to be my mission to be a voice for these animals. I went from knowing to feeling and now acting. I was no longer a follower, but I became a leader in my own journey, the journey of passion, purpose, and pursuit. My pursuit started with a conversation. As I spoke with someone with a very different set of respectable views from mine, I shared my love for the environment and my eagerness to act on my passion. The response I received was, but you're young, you should focus on studying in your family. You can't change the world. I left that conversation with the statement, let's talk again in five years. He was not wrong. 
but I'm young and I believe it's my job to protect my future. So I, my new sense of purpose was driving me to act. So I reached out to a friend of mine who had an environmental forum called Us for Planet and encouraged him to turn it into a youth-led environmental awareness organization. We've now been working together for the past year and every month we hold events to raise awareness about the biodiversity and wildlife here in Hong Kong. Through working with Us for Planet, I've learned that each seven of us are passionate in our own ways. This opened up my mind and made me realize that we're all a leader in our own journey. Due to COVID-19, many projects in Hong Kong were losing funding as a focus shifted from social environmental issues to health. One of these projects was the Hong Kong Ocean Youth Program. Their challenge was to run the program with no money and social distancing measures, limiting people to come together and work on the project. So I was excited at the thought of running this program online, and I was given the opportunity to be the program coordinator. We, together, we recruited 12 youth from Hong Kong and encouraged them to fall in love with the ocean. We were on a mission to save the coral reefs. We use art to appeal to people's emotions, design to appeal to as a means to educate people, and engineering to make a coral reef mapping robot. Around the same time, Greta Thunberg was running the climate strike movements in various countries around the world, including Hong Kong. Sure enough, I was eager to be part of a change like this one. So I reached out to the team and asked if I could join. Within a few months, I was working with them. We've now been working together for the past few, year, few months, and we've held strikes and online movements to encourage people to come out and share their thoughts. As the months went by, my pursuit started to grow, from a local project like Hong Kong Ocean Youth and Us for Planet to a global movement, climate action. The common theme that I observed throughout these projects was that there are many young people out there who are eager to come together and think and act in a manner similar to mine. I believe that, you know that look somebody gives you when they're skeptical of you? As young people, we get that look. Sometimes we might lack experience that you can simply only gain with time. However, I believe that this lack of experience gives us a sense of fearlessness to try new things and to act. So I, by now, it was clear in my head that I wanted to connect young people around the world to come together, share their love for the environment, inspire and support each other. I did this by founding the Youth Ocean Alliance. The Youth Ocean Alliance is a global group of young ocean ambassadors who are looking for a sustainable way to protect and conserve our oceans. We're doing this by founding teams in various countries around the world and using citizen science and conservation projects to address each country's largest ocean challenge. It has now been four months since I founded the Youth Ocean Alliance, and we are happy to share that we're starting our efforts in four countries around the world, Hong Kong, Mexico, Australia, and Canada. In Hong Kong, we identified ghost nets and ocean plastics to be the two largest challenges for the ocean. However, across the world in Mexico, my partner identified a lack of awareness to be the largest roadblock to protecting the ocean. The problems that we identify and the means to address them are localized to the region that we're working in. Due to COVID-19, many, due to, like COVID-19, challenges concerning the ocean do not respect borders. Just like COVID-19, challenges concerning the ocean do not respect borders. This is why we need a global group of young ocean ambassadors who are ready to act. Now, I'm going, I shared my journey from the day I was born, and today is a very important day in my journey. I hope today is the day that I'll be joined by you in the movement of passion, purpose, and pursuit. Your journey starts with passion. Passion equals love, and when you fall in love, you need to allow yourself to be truly vulnerable to experience the joy of the environment. Allow yourself to feel, physically and emotionally. Put everything else aside. As you walk along the beach, feel the sand between your toes. As you stand on top of a mountain, feel the wind in your hair. Allow the power of the earth to flow through you. Protecting the environment is a long and bumpy road, and we will all face challenges along the way, and we will have to make changes as we go along, not just in our mindset, but also in our lifestyle. There will be moments where we will want to give up. That's when you relive your passion moment. I've been lucky enough to observe my teacher, Miss Garlic, who unconsciously embodies the meaning of passion. 
She has a dream to see elephants in the wild. Her passion is centered around something she has never seen, but only dreamt of. She teaches me to dream about the magic of nature. Purpose. Purpose is simply a decision, the decision to act. The decision to act is a pivotal moment in your journey. When you found your purpose, you will not wait for somebody else to tell you what to do or how to do it. You will take every conceivable effort to make it happen. I have not observed a sense of purpose in anyone like I have in my little friend Nias. Nias has a dream to go to Africa and see the bushbuck. At the age of nine, he raised money for his family of five to travel all the way from Hong Kong to Africa to see this animal. He raised money by painting beautiful cards of the bushbuck. And every night as he lie in bed, he asked his mom to teach him about the animals and the local language spoken by the tribal community. Pursuit. There is no one image that pursuit should look like, from the decision to stop using plastic bags, to starting an NGO, to going vegan. Each individual has their own ways of turning words into actions. It starts with the smallest change you make to your life. Each change leads to a bigger one, until your actions to protect the environment are no longer a question, but an instinct. A few months ago, someone asked me, when given the choice between the environment, the environment and comfort, how do you convince yourself to choose the environment? In that moment, I realized that when you know your passion and your purpose, pursuit is no longer a question. It is an instinct. A key piece to the puzzle that is pursuit are the people who are going to work alongside you and support you. I was reminded of this in the last few weeks when I was having a conversation with my friend Ben. Ben is an avid bird watcher and wildlife photographer, and he's been pursuing bird watching and photography as a hobby. Over the past few months, he's turned that as a means to educate people. We were having a conversation about our future, and I mentioned that I would be hesitant to live in a country where with a lack of access to nature. Ben looked at me and he said, nature is everywhere. You just have to look closer. In that moment, I, I, had no, I had always known this, but it gave me a new perspective on something I already knew. You might be asking yourself, why am I sharing these stories of people in my life with you? I'm sharing these stories to highlight that passion, purpose, and pursuit is unique to each individual, and it's up to you to craft what that should look like. The UN Sustainable Development Goals were not as effective as intended because they lacked the personal connection. For an individual, when you look at an SDG, it can feel overwhelming, as though your contribution will be negligible. As though your contribution will be negligible. I hope by using passion, purpose, and pursuit, your impacts of our actions will become clearer and clearer each day. The responsibility, falls on, the responsibility to protect our home falls on each one of our shoulders, and we cannot continue to brush off that responsibility. It's now or never. We are the people in positions of power. We have more power than we realize, and it's up to us to create the change that we want. If I, 15 years, two months, and 18 days old can do it, then so can you. Let's start now.